the whole thing about making espresso is typically coffee making takes two and a half to four and a half minutes. But in this case, every variable becomes that much more important because of the very, very short amount of time. There's so much happening. It's such a volatile process. It's kind of a, it's kind of a violent thing, uh, extracting espresso. It's 135 pounds of pressurized water, which is like you know, an adult human being's body weight being forced through just a tiny wafer of coffee. And any misstep by the barista is going to uh, manifest itself in the cup in a very unpleasant way. And the reason is because most people who are preparing it don't, don't give it that sort of respect that it, that it needs. This is a good practice when you uh, first walk up to the machine just to see how it feels. If it feels really coarse, then it probably is. So a lot of times I can make an initial adjustment just by feeling it and going, OK, that's, that's off. All right. Before you ever prepare a shot of espresso, you want to make sure to preheat a cup. So here's my cup. I'm just going to set it under the hot water spigot. I don't want to have my hands down there because I don't want to get burned. I'm going to fill it about a third to a half of the way full. And then I'm just going to set it aside and let it preheat while I prepare my espresso. This is the porta filter. And first thing I'm going to do when I pull a shot, especially if there's a, an old coffee cake in here, I'm just going to knock it out, one tap. And then I want to actually make sure that the basket is clean and dry. Because coffee, when it's ground, exposes all of this oil. And as we know, oil and water don't mix. So I want to get rid of the water, allow the oil a chance to do what it does best, which is seal off that little area there. This settles the coffee in, makes sure that it's nice and even. And now I have kind of a loose mass of coffee in the basket. If I were just to tamp that right now, it would be an uneven bed of coffee. There would be uneven density here and here and here. And as such, the water would over-extract the less dense and under-extract the more dense. So what I have to do is redistribute the coffee using my index finger. Next, I'm going to tamp about 30 pounds of pressure, a little polish, wipe it clean, and it's just about ready to go. Purge a little bit of water through the group head. That's going to clean off the dispersion screen, and it's also going to make sure that what's available here is nice and fresh and hot water. Insert the porta filter, start my shot right away, make sure to toss out that pre warming water. Proper espresso extraction happens somewhere between 20 and 30 seconds, depending on what you're looking for. If your coffee looks pale, tastes a little thin and a little weak, then you might have to, to pull the shot a little slower, which just means adjusting your grind a little bit finer. If your shot looks black, is too short, uh, and tastes like super bitter and compact, then you're probably extracting a little slow. So you can adjust your grind a little coarser and be ready to go. So when I'm done, it should look something like that. One and a half to two ounces of espresso and burnt caramel appearance. It's really nice. My name is Kyle Glanville. We're here at Intelligentsia Coffee in Venice, California. We take every single step in the chain from seed to cup as seriously as possible. And you know, I think that manifests itself and a great cup of coffee, a, a different kind of coffee than what most people are used to experiencing. Uh, but you can get into coffee like, like a wine connoisseur would get into wine. It's, it's, it's actually quite easy. And if you come and visit us, then uh, you'll, you'll meet a lot of people who are that way, <laughs> for sure. <laughs>